So now we have been concentrating on the idea that work is good. No matter what we are doing, except for blatant sin, we can do it as worship towards God. Any type of work is ultimately valuable in its relation to God. This is because the image of God can shine through us as we work. We can work like God works. We can work in obedience to God's command toward humanity to work. We can acknowledge our dependence upon God as we work in his creation and with the skills he has given us. We can work in community being a model of the Trinity in action. We, we have established that work can be worship. So with that said, what should we do? What should we be doing? What type of work should you and I do? This is an interesting question because it is a relatively new question. Occupational mobility is a relatively recent development brought by the Industrial Revolution. Historically, occupations were not a matter of personal decision. You did what your father did before you. The sons of carpenters were carpenters. The sons of farmers were farmers. Boys went into the family business. It was not just an ex expectation. It was merely a fact. Today, some people experience pressure from their parents to choose the same line of work that their parents have chosen. Fathers still want to encourage their sons to take over the family business. This is not what I'm talking about. In previous times, there really were not options for occupations. It was an occupationally static environment for all males. And I am intentionally being sexist in my description because there were even fewer occupational choices for women. Now, some rare moments, the community would call on a specifically gifted individual into a different line of service. Every once in a while, a father could arrange special training for a son in a different occupation. Some would be chosen by the elders to go into religion. But these were not, again, not matters of personal decision. The individual never had to wrestle with the question, what should I do for work? It was always, almost always, a given. Scripture is written in this context. This context of static occupations. Farmers remain farmers and slaves typically remain slaves. Soldiers were soldiers. Tax collectors stayed tax collectors. The best Christian theology, theological development on work can also be seen as the idea of vocation. vocation. However, most of the thinking was initiated by like people like John Calvin and finalized from within the European feudal system. The feudal system was still a context of basically static occupations. Allow me to summarize theological and traditional Christian medieval thinking about work. And this will be, this is definitely an uh, oversimplification. But as an omnipotent and omniscient God has divinely ordered the entire world down to the minutia of detail. This order includes your station in his created realm. Where God has placed you is exactly where God wants you. To question your occupation is to question the very plan of God. But today things have changed. So what guidance can we find from God for the occupational context in which we find ourselves? Even in scriptures that were written in a static environment, we can apply some principles to our newfound freedom in the world of work. First, let's look at one verse that encourages change. 1 Corinthians 7.21 You were called. Were you called while a slave? It should not be a concern to you. But if you can be free, if you can become free, by all means, take the opportunity. Paul instructing members of the Corinthian church. Although slavery was more than just an occupation in ancient Roman culture, it was at its core a type of work 
and and many folks many of the early christians worked as slaves this first does two very specific things first it allows people to be content in a less than op optimal work environment if you are forced into work and working conditions are not perfect it is okay you can work to feed yourself in below optimal conditions god will give you grace to survive in that situation in other places paul will encourage you to do your best in bad situations but second in this verse it says that if we have the opportunity to pursue a working situation that is better than our current condition, we should. It is okay for the downtrodden to look for a change and to better our circumstances. If you can, go for it. Scriptures allow for us to move, but how should we decide to do that?